What is going on, guys? This is The Sticks. Make sure you hashtag it in everything you tweet at us. And now Kingdom is here, so he can officially start it up by not starting it up. I kind of did that on purpose. I mean, I know you. I, 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 <laughs> you, you made Goli have a That's panic. Attack. So, so you, so you want to arrive fashionably late to your own show? Is that what? We're, we're yes, seeing? correct, correct. Um, with a triple chocolate cookie, ch chocolate chip cookie in hand, that I'm gonna eat in front of all of you because I'm so jealous. I'm gonna tell you the best cookie I've ever had was on an American Airlines flight. It was. Freshly baked, I don't know how, or it's maybe microwave more than likely, <laughs> but it had it had it was like white chocolate and like raisins and like it was so delicious. It was like legit white chocolate and raisins ever. is yeah. Was there like, any oatmeal involved or was it just like no like, man? No, yeah. although I do love uh, oatmeal oatmeal cookies with raisins. Uh in, in this case, this chocolate chip cookie with raisins was pristine. I don't know if I've had that chocolate chip cookie with raisins. That sounds. Just... If I had cranberries, I'd probably kill it in a second. What were you gonna say, Patty? Uh, that just sounds wrong. What? Unless it's like chocolate covered raisins. Can you put that in a cookie? Is that legal? Yes, of course you can put that on a cookie. You can yeah, put anything, put on anything a cookie. in a cookie. If you want to put pepperoni on a cookie, you can't. It'll be a uh... pizza cookie in a sense. <laughs> I mean, it's got the same. If you if you think a about cookie. it, a cookie is like a cookie is like a mini pizza in a sense, but sweeter and made of sugar instead of bread there's no spot. i'd rather have like one of those papa john's that are like the big cookie instead of a mini pizza oh yeah 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 I feel i've like had that. those before yeah that's good yeah. what is that <laughs> <laughs> it's just lost he's like wait are we talking about maybe we should announce our guests cookies? oh yeah this is uh big off the kex um he's on the show today and what we're gonna do is the same way we always start this show we're gonna introduce ourselves and you guys are gonna say your name, uh, your affiliations within the community, even if they're obvious, say them anyway, if you want to throw out your sponsors or whatever. And then, since we're on the topic of cookies, I want you to tell everybody uh, the best thing you've ever eaten. And I'm going to start with, I love looking at Hitch and Fatty's faces to see which one I'm going to pick. All right. <laughs> I'm going to start with Fatty, and I'm going to go Hitch, Hex, and then myself. Best thing I've ever eaten? Yes. You know what? I've eaten so many things. There's a reason <laughs> I'm fat. Um, you know, there's this place in Spanish Fork, Utah, where I live, called Two Jacks. They make the best pizza ever. Every time I eat there, uh, it's awesome. So that's it. My affiliations. Um, I am sponsored by Gamma Labs now, so I think that's pretty cool. I also have a Cinch Gaming sponsorship. Um, nice. And then I cast Anywhere, Everywhere. And I'm wearing my optic jersey today, just just so you know. Because because you are the man. Yes. <laughs> and coincidentally, my favorite person in this chat right now. So. Yes. Oh, man, that hurts. <laughs> Maybe you should have worn something optic. No, I, I did. I'm wearing, I'm wearing optic, optic fanboyness. So. Technically, not what? really. What? Huh? Uh, I, I'm hit. Well, this is this is what I'm gonna say about that, Smiley Fatty. When you have every team's jersey behind you, you're pretty much a fanboy. Period. Oh, <laughs> so don't. So please. So please don't don't be worried that somebody might call you an optic fanboy. They're just gonna call you a fanboy. Period. I, oh, it's man. true. I did get called a fanboy because I have every jersey. <laughs> um, I'm Hitch. I make uh, con YouTube content for uh, Gamma. I used to make it for UMG, and. Um, Best thing I've ever eaten. Uh, I had some dope calamari one time at uh, in Washington D.C. Dope calamari. Is that yeah. like some sort of weed? Yeah. <laughs> Is that an edible? <laughs> yeah. It was. It was extremely edible. I got it. Got it. Got it. I killed it. Cool. Right, so I guess it's my right. turn. Uh, my name is Hector Rodriguez, also known as Optic Hex. I am uh, the owner of Optic Gaming and also a co-founder of of, uh, of Optic. And although Optic was founded before, it was just before me, before I came into the picture, it was just like a pickup team at that point. I mean, yeah, they competed and yeah, it was, but it was just like a group of guys that would come home, play video games, compete in game battles. But it did become an organization. It didn't become what it is today until I took over in uh, 2000, like beginning 2008 and, you know, and, and beyond. So uh, that's me, guys. In case you guys didn't know, I'm, I'm off the cacks. I, I like long-winded walks. No, that's such that's, that's a trivial answer, though, I think. Um, the, the, my favorite food, though, and, and uh, this is going to be no surprise to anyone. 
right? It's it's a uh, it's Mexican food, or as I like to call it, food. <laughs> and it's, it's, a, it's a it's a dish made by my mom. It's a uh, it's it's uh, chipotle pepper based. So don't think chipotle like I'm gonna get a burrito bowl. No, it's, it's chipotle is a pepper, but it's a uh, chipotle. How do I how do I say this? It's the best dish. And it's my favorite dish. If I was dying today, and they say what do you want your last meal to be? It would be my mom's dish called chipotle. Right? It's a uh, it's shredded meat with the chipotle based pepper thing and then you have you know a side of beans and obviously we don't use forks or knives or sometimes we do but tortillas are it's our main thing so that would be my my thing to eat that sounds um pretty good like pretty good food i won't say mexican food that sounds like some pretty good food uh so my name is kingdom soldier this is my show and uh, I do some stuff on YouTube. I'm also sponsored by Gamma Labs, G Fuel, uh, 10% off with my code that you can see down below. Uh, I'm very thankful for Optic Hex coming on here today because what some of you might not know is that this show's existence was his idea. Uh, he actually, the way we used to do the sticks back in the day with me, Hitch, and Fatty both have done it together was when we did it as a long episode that we would put up on the internet. And then my time became too short for us to do that, but I stuck with Goldie, my producer best guy on the planet uh and now we do it live and so it's cool to come full full circle hex and i do thank you for the idea because it was a good one uh, uh and i don't, I don't think ahead. it was an idea as much as me like saying you know pointing in in a direction and whether you chose to take it or not that was going to be up to you and i'm glad that you did though man the, uh, more shows like these are are needed uh, i myself wanted to start a show uh and, and i did one episode and, and it went well but, you know, due to time constraints, et cetera, et cetera, I wasn't. And it wasn't really like the vision that I had for the show. So uh, I may still do it, but it'll be it'll be something different. I mean, it's, it's still in the back of my head. It's just a matter of, of, of bucking up and actually doing it. Well, we will be on the lookout for that. Uh, the best thing I've ever eaten was at the actually the best new chef in North America. I don't even remember his name, but he's actually here in Washington on Vashon Island. And for our anniversary last year, me and my wife went to Vashon and stayed there. We went to his restaurant. It took us two and a half hours to eat the eight-course meal, but every single part of it was ridiculous. Um, we had, like, duck, and it was a whole bunch of food that we had never really eaten. There was stuff we – I didn't even know what I ate, but it was just delicious, except for the oysters. I didn't touch that. I don't touch oysters. Uh, that's just my bad. thing. They're not bad with hot sauce. I, I just don't – I don't – It's they just <laughs> seem disgusting. So uh, you guys keep tweeting out the stream. Use the hashtag, the sticks. I can see Ace the Golden Boy, Bully. Um, hello to all of you guys in the chat. So I know that you guys have a lot of serious questions for Hex. But before we get to the serious you better, questions. You guys better not. <laughs> this, is, this is a place of learning doctors. This is for fun. Don't you dare come in here with your hard questions for me, okay? <laughs> I'm very good at deflecting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, you're very straightforward. That's one of the things I appreciate about you. You, you are very. You, you get to the point. You get to the point. Um, I'll tell you later if you ask. If you want to know how you kind of, you didn't crush my dreams, but I had different expectations for the first time we talked. Oh. <laughs> and, you, okay. and you, but I was happy with where you took it, with the direction that you took the conversation. So cool. Yeah. Now, now everybody in the chat. That's is all like, that matters. What? What? I am so confused right now. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think that you need to lead with that now. I think you need to tell us what you're talking about. <laughs> the fact that he said, you didn't crush my dreams, but you know, <laughs> that's how it started. Uh, it was All right, close. so, um, and then I'll ask my question, but I will say, so basically, um, uh, Hex, when you first contacted me, you hit me up on Twitter, you hit me with a DM, and you mm -hmm. said, here, add me, add me on Skype when you get a chance. No. Nice. I'm just kidding. What? Oh, I was like, now. Nah. Yeah, well, basically, of course, it's you. I, I, of course, I was going to do it now. So, uh, really. you know, after freaking out and for a moment and going, why is Hex DMing me and saying, so, you know, I go to Goalie and I'm like, Goalie, why do you think he would DM me and ask me him up on Skype? So I hit you up and he's like, you know, my friends were telling me stuff like, maybe he wants you to be like the um, the spokesperson for the new Optic Nation channel and maybe he wants you to take it over and run the content. And I mean, there were so many ideas brewing in my head. Yeah. And then I get on the call, and I'm not going to get into the details, but basically yeah. it was, hey, with great power becomes comes great responsibility. You actually told me that. You so said, you sound very original. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, no, you told me you said him. <laughs> you liked my content. You liked what I made. You, you thought that I was going to go somewhere. Um, you thought that I had a future in the scene. And, but that I needed to make sure that the information that I was giving out was accurate. And I had given out some 
inaccurate information about one of your players and mm -hmm. you let me know that it was inaccurate and you told me your line was always available. If I had specific questions regarding optic, if you could share them, you would. And so I appreciate it because that open line of communication is what, you know, however long later, I think it's been like nine or 10 months, gave me the opportunity to hit you up and say, do you want to be on the show? So I appreciate it. I appreciate oh, you. welcome. And don't, I, when people say stuff like that to me, I'm like, I mean, this is, you know, basic human interaction, right? That's the way you're supposed to act to other human beings. You're supposed to, you're yeah. not. I, I never, ever take myself serious enough in my position of what I've accomplished and, and taking that and said, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to talk to this fucking, <laughs> funky guy, funky guy, funky guy. Okay. I'm not swearing. And, uh, and, and that's why I said it. Right. So. So no, yeah, I, I I always find it weird when you're like, oh, thanks for taking the time. I'm like, hey, if if the time's available, why wouldn't I take the time, right? It's it's all about the more you put into the scene, the more it grows. The more that you're about everybody else as much as you are about yourself, the the better the ecosystem is going to be able to stabilize itself and then continue, you know, growth, um, you know, growth and prosperity in a sense. No, and I appreciate it. So my first question for you, my first first personal question is. I have been called by especially this guy that's in the chat, Big Snacks, the owner of Justice, um, on very many occasions, a Optic fanboy. Um, yeah. I was called that today in the video when I announced that you were coming on my show, and yeah. I very vehemently defended myself. Um, <laughs> because, <laughs> um, And yes, my biggest four videos are about Optic, you know, Nate Shot or Stumpy or whoever, or whatever trades. Um, and I've had, I, I've gotten tired of defending myself, as I'm sure you guys you know, you don't you guys don't make a habit of defending yourselves to either your fans complaining or other people, other pro gamers complaining about you and your fans. And That's so right. uh, my question is, what in your mind is an optic fanboy? If that even exists, how would you define it? Um, and how do you handle all of the drama that goes on with, with the attacks on your fans in general and on you guys as gamers? Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think the attacks on our fans are as 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 bad as as you guys think they are. I mean, they, there's obviously a, a few boisterous uh, people that do say, "Oh, if it wasn't fan, optic fans are the worst," right? But if you go to if I was to go to a Green Bay stadium, you know, to to a Green Bay Packers game at their stadium, and and something happened with with uh, with the Bears, my team, and I cheer for them and I defended whoever was heckling them. Uh, I'm pretty sure that somebody in the in the in the in the stands would would have the same thing to say about me as far as like, oh. Or, or let's say this, right? Let's say I'm Bears fan. I'm there with like 13 of my guys, right? My closest friends that I've known since high school. We go to a Packers game, right? And we get rowdy. Beers flying everywhere when we score. Oh, Bears fans are so rowdy. They're the worst. Of course they're going to say that because we're cheering yeah. for something that they're not cheering for. Um, I think that, that the fact that our fans are so passionate about Optic is, is simply because we're passionate about our fans, right? Like it, the, the green wall... A term that was started by my brother, uh, Optic Tumors or Optic Tombs, was originally the Green Wall was originally myself, Optic Nerve, Optic Carlton, Optic J, and my brother. We were called the Green Wall because, as you know, Diesel, Diesel's tall. My brother's very tall. Uh, Nerve was kind of big, so we were all standing behind Nate Shot, uh, Flawless, Nameless, and Merc, and we were wearing our black and green jerseys, and we literally looked like a Green Wall, right? So my brother's like, "Holy <laughs> shit, we look like a Green Wall." Right. So so we were like, all right. And, and I'm not swearing. I'm quoting. Right. So if I'm quoting somebody in the way they said it. Right. It's not me swearing. So <laughs> swearing. F -bombs so, around. Yeah. So so that's that's where the term green wall started. Right. And, 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 and through the same passion that we had about our players. Right. We're, we're on the team. Right. But we're, we're also passionate about the players that are playing for us and the players that are our teammates. Through that passion, we were able to continue to grow. And then, you know, somebody watched my videos at the time and. And everything was like going well for me, and you know, I decided, you know, let's, let's let's try to build this thing together. And little by little, we started gathering friends, and by friends, I mean just fans or friends that we've never met. Fans that are uh, fans are all over the place. Started growing, the green wall kept on growing, uh, and and I was passionate about that. I was passionate about the growth. I was passionate about being respectful to them and always doing what what needed to be done in order to keep them happy, in a sense. Um, and I think that our passion for them has been reciprocated. You know, a hundred times over, so hundreds of thousands of times over. So I, I think, uh, I think that the negative connotation of our fans is just a, a a simple reflection of what we as Optic have built in the relationship with our fans. So how do you? What about with your players? Like you, 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 your team seems to have this 
uncanny ability um, to – and when I talked to you before, um, you said something about, of course, when you picked up um, Killa, or maybe I saw this on a video. I don't remember what this was, but you said that there was some things that you mentioned. Um, yeah. You know, but you liked – generally, you liked Killa's personality. Um, we Absolutely. all like Killa's personality. He's entertaining. I mean, and if anything else, above all else, Optic Gaming is not just – a great team that can win championships, but they're entertaining. Um, they're yeah. great entertainers. Um, yeah. And so what do you actually tell your players? Like, what is it that makes optic players so discreet when it comes to social media? Um, is there like a bond? Do you guys get together and do a powwow? One, two, three optic. I mean, what, <laughs> what is it that you do? Um, that's exactly that gets your players what, that's stick, exactly to, stick to that. We, we usually share a list. There's like oil involved, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I think uh, I think that from the get go, I'm very clear on uh, and like you said, very direct on the things that are that are expected from them. If I'm gonna go to bat for somebody, that somebody's gonna go to bat for me. And if the the say, if I have your back and you don't have my back, it's not reciprocated. Then it's time time to ship you off, right? Uh, the opportunity that we offer here is 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 to live a dream that that not a lot of people get to to experience. And uh, and I've always said it. Every single interview and every chance I get it, right? I, I, I get. I, I say this, right? And it is because of that, right, that we have a responsibility to always do the right thing at all times, to continue to live this dream that many people would kill for. So, with that responsibility of having the dream job, you have to take advantage of every single opportunity. So, when Killer was brought on, and I've always been a fan of him. I like his personality. I like. I mean, some of the things obviously are, you know, things that, you know, t typically you wouldn't do, right, without, without the right guidance. And, and, and I told him, I'm like, look, man, I'm not going to tell you exactly, I'm not going to tell you what to do, right? You know what you can't do anymore, right? You know what's right, you know what's wrong, let's just go with that. And if you slip here and there, we'll talk about it. Right? We're humans, we make mistakes, and, and that's what it's going to be. Um, and since then, <laughs> he, he, gets a, he gets a little cuckoo out there, and, and that's why I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of his, but, you know, and nothing... So far, that has been uh, that has been too detrimental, if I may use yeah, yeah. Uh, his word, yeah. uh, to, to, to to optic and, and yeah. the scene as a whole. So uh, you know, I'm I'm happy with with uh, where it's at. I do. I am gonna ask him though to to uh, to do more content for me. Uh, that's something that Optic Nation. Oh, I mean, Ambos, Ambos is the only one that that's focused on that. And and you know, I I, I wanted to I want to be able to 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 have you know miracles. Ricky and and, and Adam have uh, have the same opportunities that that Scumpy, you know, Nate Shot and everybody else in Optic has, right? To to make a solid solid uh, living off of off of what our passion is, and that's uh, Call of Duty and and what we do. How often have you ever, when you've seen another team player? that plays for an owner that you have good relationship with that has done something detrimental. Um, have you ever actually reached out and said something to the owner or do you kind of set the example and if they follow it, they follow it. If they don't, they don't. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, there, there was a, there was a, there was a scene in Moneyball where, uh, where Brad Pitt says something like if your enemy's making, if your enemy is busy making mistakes, don't interrupt them. Let them make the mistakes for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but no, there's there's uh, there's a couple of, uh, of of owners that that I really get along with. Uh, Hasler being like the the main one, uh, and and uh, no, I don't I don't think I've ever reached out to to uh, to anybody and told them how to run their organization. I'm uh, I'm in no position to do that. Just because something worked for me doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work for them. If they want to follow in the footsteps that we've done or in the blueprint that we have set on how to, because what we've done is public, right? We we. We, we've always been very open and we've never been secretive about the ways to our success and, and what it is that we've taken there, right? Uh, yeah. And, and Nate Shot says that in every single video, it, not being a douchebag is like number one. You know, don't, don't, don't be a dick, right? It's, it's, uh, yeah. it, it's the number one thing. And then after that, everything else falls into place if you work hard and, and, and it is what it is. So, no, um, I, I've never taken that approach to anyone. I don't think I'm, I'm in, the, in the right spot to... to to suggest, I mean, if they ask for my advice, of course I'll give it any day of the week, right? Any yeah, day of the week yeah. I'll give it. But if, but I'm not just gonna put my nose in somebody else's business. I, I, I'm old school. I don't. I wasn't raised that way. I wasn't. I didn't grow up that way, and I'll never be that way. Awesome, awesome. What would you say are is your, um, what is your primary goal for yourself as a business owner? Like, you know, these players even that you have right now, uh, at a certain point, they're gonna stop 
playing and get off the sticks and do something else, you know? Yeah. And that's all of them, you know, not just Nade, who is, you know, at at the forefront of everyone's mind. When is he retiring? Is he going to retire? Is he going to switch? Is he going to do something else? Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, you know, you aren't, I'm guessing you're not going to be in the position that you're in right now with Optic Gaming mm-hmm. or ever. And so what are your personal goals? Like, do you have goals that you've set for Optic in general that you're trying to meet before you kind of step away? Or are you, you know, working on kind of training someone else up to do it? Uh, no, I, I think that, I mean, it, it's it's easy for us, right, in a sense. I mean, yeah, we work harder than anybody else. We're, we're, we're streaming every single day. We're making videos every single day without, uh, we don't skip a beat. So it, it's easy in a sense where where if from the get-go you set certain, certain you know, rules in a sense as to as to what the goal is, uh, and, and you put it in in in, a, in the in your teammates' minds on on what the common goal is. It's a lot easier for for us to navigate through all the problems that we're going to go through. Uh, yeah, we we may stumble here and there, but at the end of the day, like we we still have our north star, and that's like our our main goal. Uh, so so it's easy, right? Uh, do I think Nashad is ready for retirement? Absolutely not. I think I think he's uh, playing playing some strong Call of Duty. I think that. Because we talk about it all the time, right? Like, is it is it is it is it better for him to to not stress out as much and maybe take some time off and focus, continue to focus on on his already successful, you know, stream or an already successful YouTube channel, etc. Uh, and, and then we always go back to like, nah, man, like you're doing really good. Like, I, I think that he's doing just as good as he's done in the past, but. In, in that in that period of growth where he exploded and he was like the biggest thing during Black Ops Two, a lot of pe- a lot of his a lot of his skill and a lot of his his uh, his his uh, his player, you know, his, his the way he was a player, the, how good he was, was overshadowed by his success. So everybody would be like, yeah. "Oh, this guy's a YouTuber. This guy, you know, he's not real." He's like, so at the end of every event, everybody would be like, "You know what? Nation's doing pretty good." And it was like he does good every single event. He's like he's consistent. And then now that 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 everything's leveling out, and and you know his fame is not as much, uh, you know, his fame is already there, so it's not a new thing, and it's not something that's going to overshadow his, uh, his his performance. I think that a lot of people, a lot, more, a lot more people are starting to notice how how good of a player he's always been, right? He may not be in the top five percent of, or in the top five player, best players, that, but he's always been a very good top ten player, especially in SMD. Uh, so, so I think that that's that's a happy thing, and I think that's that's one of the main things that that uh, that stress him out a little bit. But as far as me, and as far as him, and anybody else, like we're we are, let's say in the first percent of what what optic. Uh, is going to become, I think. It, it, the scene still has so much growth left, right? So for me to yeah. step down or for me to bring somebody up to to do it, I think uh, it's not something that, that that we'll ever do. I think that that uh, that I'll continue to help all my teammates and, and and players, you know, be more than just what they than than, than what they are right now. Uh, but as far as just like stepping away from the scene, I don't think I could ever do that. It's video games. So I, I, I intend on playing video games and making videos until I'm. Until I can't, until I can no longer play video games because of these, these uh, arth- arthritic hands. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna switch to um, Fatty and Hitch are gonna kind of run questions from uh, Twitter and YouTube in a moment. But make sure, um, let me make sure I recognize TG Photo, Just Keep Shooting, and Coldcast. Thank you guys for subbing to the channel. Um, we don't get to hear, and I I don't have the thing up, and so my phone's not making the noise. But I know that we have the killer like choo-choo train sound as the sub sound. And so I know you guys are going, I see it in the chat right now. You guys are going nuts. Um, and I wish I could hear it, but it was too loud when we actually had it up pretty loud. Uh, so, so for one serious question, Hex, um, that I want to ask you, make sure you Wait, guys are tweeting out. Last one's more serious? Jeez. No, no, no. This is, yeah, yeah, one serious question from me. Um, that wasn't serious. No, that was, that was easy. <laughs> so... <laughs> And make sure you guys are tweeting out the stream that we're going to go to questions from Twitter and YouTube uh, in a moment. Use the hashtag, the sticks. So when I did in the last show or two shows ago when I had Hashtro on, I believe it was, uh, mm-hmm. before that show, we had polled and asked um, the we had I had asked Twitter. So what are the top four roster changes? It's a series that I was doing on my channel, top four, top four roster changes that ever happened. And in those four, three of the four involved Optic Gaming. Um, we had... When Nade Shot took over for Rambo, that was one of them. Uh, when Skump left Optic, that was another one. And came back, kind of people said it as the same thing. And then the number one by far was mentioned by 
I think Sharp chimed in, and uh, there was a, one other pro player, might have been Krim, chimed in. Everybody that chimed in said that the Merck trade was the biggest roster change that's ever taken place. And I know that was very calculated for you guys. It's funny that actually when we promoted this show, when we all tweeted the graphic at the same time on the same minute, that's where I got yeah. the idea from was when you guys yeah. did that. So my question for you is, um, how is your personal relationship with Merck now? Mm -hmm. And are there any regrets for how you guys handled that roster change? Uh, no, there's no regrets on how we handled that roster change. The only thing that I that, that I do regret, I guess, is is, uh, is is talking a little bit more on uh, on the stuff that I should have, uh, as 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 far as like his his you know the way he was feeling. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of things, and and, and like there, there's a lot of things that happened, right? It wasn't just just yeah, yeah. that particular thing, right? It's it, it, it wasn't the first time that we kicked somebody off the team, right? Uh, it, there, there was there was times uh, in in previous in previous uh, rosters where Merck was a part of that we had to get rid of a player, right? And and he had no problems doing that then. Uh, and and unfortunately, like, it, yeah, I guess it could have been handled a little bit better, but it it was handled the right way simply because we had to let people know as much as we could. Otherwise, we would have just yeah. been like the biggest buttholes in the world for for doing something right there, there, there had to be yeah. two sides of the story uh my relationship with Merck is not is not what it used to be unfortunately right i i uh i'm i'm very i'm i'm, I'm very cool with uh with with jcap um, i'm still very good friends with uh with rambo uh he's my steak buddy uh but Merck, we we haven't been able to 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 do anything i i i, I you know it's it, it's weird i and again, I don't want to get too much into it because it's going to seem like it's, yeah, it's a lopsided yeah, yeah. thing. But he's got, you know, he's, he he doesn't have to forgive me. He doesn't have to do anything. Uh, so I, I just stopped saying, you know, when 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 the hello wasn't being returned, I just stopped saying hello. So, you know, it sucks though because I, I I always did, you know, I was, I was always honest when when I said that I, that I that I that I did like him a lot. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, men yeah. men uh, men aren't supposed to be as uh, as emotional as as uh, as as we as we could be, I guess. But you know, it is what yeah, it is. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a I'm a man and I move on. No feelings. We're <laughs> bros here, okay? We're all men. <laughs> is that one of the hardest parts about being a team owner? Is because you you guys build like a family with Optic. Yeah. Um, is it hard when you go through roster changes? I mean, is that one of the harder parts of being a team owner? Is when you make those decisions and maintaining those relationships? No, no, no. I think uh, I think that that's if if you're if you're the right type of owner, uh, no, that should never be an an, an issue. Uh, if you're me and and uh, and you you choose to have a certain relationship with your with your friends uh, and you make your friends your friends and not your players, uh, yeah. that's when it gets blurry. Uh, I, I chose to I I chose to be this way because I'm uh, I I was always I've, I've always been a big fan of of everybody succeeding together as opposed to just one person. Um, so optic as a whole has never been all about me, right? I could have, I could have, I could have been that organization that, you know, yes, I'm gonna fly you somewhere, but I'm gonna take twenty percent of your stuff. And 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 certain organizations need to do that in order to survive. And and there's yes, nothing yeah. wrong with that, right? Yes. Uh, I I could have I could have been like, you know what? Yeah, this is the sponsorship money from sponsors goes to the team, not to the players. And that's that's not how it went. I I, I was, I've always been a big fan of of uh, of common goals and and elevating each other. Uh, and not feeling like you're above somebody else. Yeah, there's a hierarchy in in in, in optic. There's there's a, there's decision making, but I've never made a decision. Uh, well, business wise, of course, I made decisions uh, by myself. But in in like especially nowadays, like I I I, I ask the players what they think on on, yeah. uh, on on everything that we do because they're a part of it. And 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 optic will not continue to grow if if nobody on the team is as passionate about it as I am. Uh, and I think that that's one of the main things that if I could ever give anybody that sort of advice is that if if your players are passionate as 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 passionate about your brand as you are, if 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 they're all about the squadron like you are, it's it's a better better way to to grow things. Good point. Well, I mean, well said. So before Deadly Creator, thank you for subbing to the channel. We're at twelve hundred right now. We're one hundred and thirty six viewers off of our. Uh, record that we had when we had sharp on like a month ago um so if you guys could tweet out the stream retweet out the stream tell people to get in here we're about to go to questions from youtube and twitter i'm actually going to start with fatty um i'm gonna let you pick one and then you guys can go back and forth and of course 
because I can't keep my opinions to myself, I will probably try to. <laughs> All right, the first one, I think it was asked by over 40 people. What are the odds that Big T will come back for Advanced Warfare? Hmm. What are the odds? Um, I don't know. Every single time I talk to him, it's always a, a definite no. But then he walks away. <laughs> but then he walks away and then, like, turns around and, like, smiles, right? So I'm like, right. <laughs> what, what do you think it's – do you think it's um, more – do you think he's more likely to come back for Halo? Because I know he's been playing a lot of Halo. I talked to him about it. I talked to him about it. Uh, it he's done everything in Call of Duty, man, that, that, that he could ever do. The, the, the stress that goes into games, the stress that you get from, from fans, both passionate and rabid fans, is, is something that he doesn't want to touch again, in a sense. He'd rather just entertain and, and have fun, which is, I completely understand. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I do. I mean, I do have, like, a, this crazy stress when, when stuff's going down. But uh, I think that, that he's done with that. But just like anything else in Call of Duty, you never say never. So will he ever come back? I'll leave you with an honest, I don't know. And if you ask him, he'll give you an honest, I don't know. He'll see, he doesn't know. So, right? So I don't know. So if he was to say come back, does that mean there would be a third Optic team? Or... <laughs> would you build a team around him just to have him oh man i'm making a hard those aren't from twitter <laughs> I'll, that's from I'll, me i'm honest I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what man there is a point zero 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 <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that i'll have a 13 okay awesome oh, look, that's so, good. so it could happen that's what i think mean. that's all i mean. so oh. you're saying there's a chance yeah, I mean that's, that's that's what I said about uh yeah. nation, right? There was no like, and and when the time that when the right time comes, right? Like if 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 things are handled appropriately, if 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 somebody is like is 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 a good per like it it just happened. It was it was right. It was the right time. Embos Embos has has uh has has such a way with with uh, with us with himself that that he uh he's he's a good dude, man. He's a good kid. I I, I have. I have high hopes for uh, for Money B, man. He's uh, he's he's a really really good guy. At, at first, you know, you 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 have you see this this big dude, and he's got these mean mugs, and he's not. And now he's all smiles, man. Like it, it yeah. it's it's, it's yeah. funny what what the right atmosphere makes makes uh, makes happen for a team. So um, we we're very very happy at the house with him. So it was it was an easy decision to to allow him to have a second team. In and fact, we offered it. In fact, well. yeah. in fact, we offered it to him. It wasn't. It wasn't a thing. Like when, when it was time to, to to replace, you know, one of them uh, between obviously Nate and him because they play the same thing. We I sat down and I told Nate, I'm like, look, man, what do you think? Like we, we can't just we can't just do it. We can't just like let him go. And we didn't tell him right away. Like when we told him, it was like, all right, man, look, it's not working out. This is what's happening. And I remember it clearly, right? He like you could tell that it was bothering him, but he was on his phone, like looking down at his phone as we were telling him this thing. You could tell that it's like this like sense of disappointment is coming over him. And I'm like, I'm like, man, he, he doesn't know. He's like, he's I'm like, man, this is gonna suck. Well, you know, and then and then we told him, it's like, but we don't want you to leave the house. We want you to stay. And if you want, you can, you know, you can you can find a team if you want. So so it was a good it was a good day at the Optic House. He was happy, we were all happy because we got to keep Embos. And uh, it was a good it was a good thing. I mean Positive things that have came from it, so it's, it's it's not bad. Positive things that I can't even tell you guys about. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Optic Chipotle coming. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Dick. Um, another thing that people have been tweeting uh, at me is that uh, that people want to know about the sniping team, or um, <clears throat> even even I mean, even if it's not classified as a sniping team, are you actually looking into more? Um, uh, I guess members of Optic that aren't on the competitive side of things. Optic fatty, um, Raj, maybe. Again. Uh, so, <laughs> so the um, the the thing with the with the sniper team was was always, it, it, and it's always the same thing that I always tell everybody that joins Optic, right? People see Optic as, as this goal, right? That they want to they want to achieve. I want to get into Optic. It's always been this way ever since Call of Duty Two, right? I always wanted to be a part of Optic. I always, I was refing all their matches. Wanted to be a part of Optic. Uh, you know, just it just so happened that you know the leadership wasn't you know they didn't they didn't want leadership over a team that was just a team. And when it came into my hands, I said, I'm not. You know, it's it's, it's go time, right? Um, but it, it it 
people see optic and they're like, all right, once I make it, I made it. And it's, and it's not the case. Once you once you get you work your ass off, right, to get into optic, and then once you get into optic, you work the hardest. That's when you really, really put oh. in work. So so when people get complacent, right? They get to optic and they're like, I made it. It's time to relax. <laughs> when it's when in my eyes it's the complete opposite. Like, yeah, you proved yourself, right? Now you have to prove yourself to me and to the organization that you belong here. And what we were having problems with the sniper team was, and I have I have conversations on Skype that I had with them months after month after month, right? Telling 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 Paul and telling the rest of the snipers that you guys need to you guys need to work, man. And and I understand that there are that it takes a while to make montages. I get that, right? But montages isn't the only thing that's there, right? You could have you could have made commentaries, you could have made a million things. You could have came up with shows. You could have done anything. They chose not to. And here at Optic, we work hard or you get your ass booted. And they got booted. Uh, at the time when, when I made the decision to to step away from sniping, I had I had I had the most sincere and committed uh, ideas that I would bring back a sniper team, right? But as of right now, I still don't see that the time is right. And until the time is right. I won't do it. And the time is right when I say it's right. So, nice. It is what it is. Nice. Awesome. Well, another question that was very popular. This came from Variation with two eyes. When Skump was wanting to come back to Optic, how did Nade Shot approach you, and what made you want to have him back in the organization? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, uh, so I'll tell you exactly how it happened. Um, when he left, it, it, it hurt me a lot because, again, I, I chose not to be that type of owner. I, cho I chose to be very involved with my friends. I, I chose to be all about them, and I chose to, to be a certain way with them. So when, when, he, when he turned his back on, on, on me, on Optic, on anything, it, uh, it, it, it kind of like made me lose a little bit of trust in him, right? And, and it was hard for me to continue to tell myself, he's like, he's young. You know, people make mistakes. You've made mistakes. People are, will continue to make mistakes for human beings. Um, so when he left, I, I went through this anger phase where I, I just couldn't believe it. Right? I was so mad at him. I, I, like I, He had just had dinner in my house right over there with my family, my mom, my dad, my sister, my daughter, my, my fiance. He had just had dinner with us. And he, we were sitting right. He was sitting there. My dad was sitting over there. We were watching a, a movie and everything was good. And then... That happens, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you just like literally like you're not just a player to me, dude. You're like my my friend. My I invited you into you know like it's my house, so it, it hurt a lot. And 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 uh, and when he when he said you know what you know that, that that he made a mistake and that he didn't see himself playing for any other team besides Optic, I I, I thought about it, man. I thought about it for a day, and and, and the anger in me was saying it's like, don't do it, don't let him back in, don't like, don't let him do it, and. And then Nate, I was like, was like, man, he's like, he's like, I, I understand I'm, I'm his age or a little bit older, but I understand like mistakes are being made. And, and then I thought about it, like I slept on it and then I woke up and I was like, all right, if, if, if I make it, let's not make an emotional decision here. Let's just like focus on, on, on the facts. And I did, you know, he's a young dude. Um, mistakes were made, you know, and, and, and it is what it is. So I think, uh, I think we made the, the right thing. I, I think that after a, sleeping on it for a night and, and having that, that, that week of anger, I think that that was the right thing to do to let him back in. I, I still consider him a very close friend. Like I, I want him and everybody else to succeed as much as I want my, my, my own kids to succeed, right? These are my friends. It's not like these are my players, I, I, you know, chess pieces. I'll move them here, I'll move them there. It's not, that's not the case. So, so when that shit happened, it, it, it like it, it messed with me like a little bit emotionally, and and, and it was it was a little bit rough, right? Because it, it it was it was all so brash and it was all so quick. There was no time to work it out, so that that pissed me off even more. So, you know, now now that we're here, you know, fast forward nine months, and and we're it was just a, a stumble, a stumble in a race. So, we're good. We're good now. I'm I'm very happy that I, that I said that I agreed with Nate Shad and and decided to welcome him back. Cause he's a good player and I mean, above anything else. Right. But, but, but on top of that, he's also a good person and you know, kids make mistakes. What was, um, because when he left, I'm sure Nate shot because he's a part of the same family was just as hurt by him. Yeah. Leaving. He, uh, Nate shot, Nate shot has, has always been like a, such a good dude, man. People see his success and immediately like attribute so much negativity, but he's a real Dude, man, he is a real dude. I, 
he said when 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 I came upstairs to the room to the to the hotel after Scumpy had told me in the lobby after the fire alarm had been rang that he was gonna do what he was gonna do. I came upstairs and Nate had said he's like he's like I I'm stepping down. If he has a problem with me, I gotta step down. He's the best player on the team. I gotta step down for the betterment of optic. He said I'll wow. I'll 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 do I'll, I'll do something. So so that sec that him saying that made me say fudge that. You're staying, he's going, <laughs> no second team, you're my dude. We will build whatever it is we're gonna build on friendship, not on not on that stuff. Because the selflessness that he's always displayed, right? Like like I, I always say, like nature has always been the dude that sacrificed most like next to me, obviously. Um, because he's always been the dude that we're like, all right, yo, uh, I know you have a team, but Rambo can't show up to this event. You know, I know you're gonna be looked at as a dick for dropping your team a week before the event, but we need you to fill in for optic. He'd be like, fine. So he looks like an asshole to 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 his buddies, comes and sacrifices, and then Rambo comes back, he gets booted, and now he has to find another team. When the whole team optic left Apex le left me for Apex, left Optic for Apex, the whole team, he came up and stepped up and he did what he could. Then when the the, the team decided to come back, he did the right thing and stepped down and, and did Optic Nation. So the sacrifices that Nate has been making. That's crazy. Yeah, think about that, right? People and forget that, about that, too. That no, not, not, not only they don't see it, right? All they see is like, and, and I attribute a lot of his success to the sacrifices that he's made, right? To the selflessness that he's had. So good for him. I'm, I'm, I, I could never be any more happy for my friend. Well, I, I, I uh, it's very bold and courageous of you to make that decision. I don't know how many owners would make that decision. Um, Which to one? Keep, oh. Well, to keep Nate oh, oh, oh. and to tell Scump to take a walk. I mean, I, I just think that's a um, – he's yeah. arguably a player that could go wherever he wanted. You know, it's very um, – that's, that's very courageous of you. And I think – I mean, it was, I think it was the right decision, of course. Um, no, I mean – Yeah, but. no, it's, it's – it, the thing is, that in, in, in Big Timer was that, and Big Timer said the same thing. He said, "Fudge that, you're not going to like," because because not only not only was that Big Timer's last, right? Like <laughs> we were just hitting from all angles. We were losing Big Timer, and then we were losing Scumpy, and then I was like, "Big, would you would you stay? Would you come back?" He's like, "Fudge that," yeah. You know? so, so it was uh, it was it was all it was overall like uh, it was it, we learned a lot from that man. We we became a lot closer since then. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think that's that. Like that, that, and that's what I always say. Like. Uh, business aside, I'm always going to have nations back, you know, business aside and, and with business and in the game, out of game, uh, the sacrifices that he's made has, has, uh, has in a sense made me be like more loyal to him than, than anything else because of the loyalty that he's shown to me for the past like five years. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's where we're at. That's great, man. I mean, honestly, um, a lot of people talk about loyalty, sticking together, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot that you just mentioned that we could piece together if we actually thought about it, but you just kind of said it in three sentences and yeah, uh, props yeah. to Nate for, for doing that. Yeah. And a, a lot of people don't see that. And, and I'm going to tell you one thing though, anytime that I'm on any talk show, the talk show goes over the allotted time. Okay. So everybody in the stream can do <laughs> the hashtag. In fact, let's do this. I said that I was going to give something away, right? So we're going to go, we're going to continue to go on. We're going to go an extra half an hour. Okay. Or something like that. Because it is now the Optic Sticks show. <laughs> I have the gavel. And <laughs> the rules. My Astro, All right, it's my turn. Kingdom Soldier, when did you start making videos? And why did you think of starting your videos on covering news of uh, roster trades? What made you say, hey, I'm going to do this. There's a, This is missing. i got to be the information guy. Oh, gosh. Um... Well, I mean, it was something you mentioned to me when we did our Skype call, um, but it was also, uh, it just, it was something I wanted to know about. News is something where, I started making videos two years ago, but news is, there's an interesting thing about news that people don't understand is that I can make a video about this video saying Hex was on my show and I can spend three minutes talking about the greatest things that were revealed in that three minutes mm -hmm. and more people would watch it than me even uploading the video on demand of this show. Uh, news is one of those things where I heard that President Obama slapped somebody. I'm going to now go to YouTube, Twitter, every social media outlet I can think of, Facebook, and I want to see him slap somebody over and over and over. I heard that Jay-Z got slapped by his sister-in-law in an elevator. What? Where is that? Let me find TMZ.com, Facebook, YouTube, 
Twitter, you want to try to find the video. News is so powerful because even when people have heard it, they want to hear it again. And for me, when I started talking about roster changes, um, I really realized that there was a missing element in the community of talking about the players. Like no one was talking about the players. And I thought that the only the only reason Ghost is still viable uh, is because with competitive is because we don't really watch Ghost because we want to watch somebody shoot a vector. Like that's not our goal when we watch Ghost. It's I want to hear the banter between Killa and and formal and replays and nade shot. I want to hear the banter and I want to be on stream when FaZe is yelling at each other. We yeah. want the players. That's what we want right now. That's what everybody is looking for. And I would honestly say that um, your player optic nade shot had the most to do with that transition when it came to competitive gaming. And it's what's going to carry us. You know, when MLG first hit me up and I wrote some um, descriptions for them, some player profiles, they watched my player profiles and they said, we don't even think about the fact that Crim6 used to play Halo. Like we don't yeah. even, we don't, we don't realize that. So what I wanted to do is remind people of what they might be missing about players specifically. When I do roster changes, saying that Scumpy went to Envy, that's the littlest part of the video. You know, the biggest part of the video is me saying, I think that Optic might get Parasite or something like that. And so mm -hmm. um, I continued it because people like yourself, people like Nadeshot that randomly tweeted out, you know, that he liked my content or whatever. And I picked up 1,300 subscribers in one day. You know, it's like people have supported me at my lowest points. And yeah. um, it makes me keep doing it. You know, today Optic Midnight followed me on Twitter. And I was like, wow, cool. You know, and so I just... Um, I do it for the community, and every time I've quit or thought of quitting, I've done two months now where um, there was one month where I said I'm done with YouTube, and I came back because Optic Nade Shot stopped by my channel. Um, there was another month recently where I just kind of stopped uploading, uh, and I came back because of the sticks. And because why did of these you? Two why did you stop uploading that? Why did I stop? Yeah, no time, uh, or or you're not about that grind. Well, huh? No, sometimes huh? I, I don't have your thick skin, I guess. Sometimes the – and because I'm not – you know, look, I don't cuss. I don't scream at people. I don't get argumentative and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I want to sometimes. <laughs> it's like – and so <laughs> when I have to hold my tongue and be quiet when people are attacking me like crazy, yeah. calling me an optic fanboy, all your top videos are optic gaming. Oh, you put Scumpy in your thumbnail so you can get views, blah, blah, blah. Number one, I'm like, is, is the, isn't the goal of YouTube to get views? Like, isn't that the goal of YouTube? Like, I mean, I'm just checking. Um, number two, I kind of just backed off and I said, you know what? I don't want to defend myself. I don't want to have to defend myself and I don't want to have to talk about it. Um, and I kept coming back because of guys like Hitch, guys like Fatty, guys like Goalie. Um, there's some other guys that are on, in the Sticks fam that now are part of other esports organizations that never would have been known. Their names wouldn't have been known mm -hmm. if they wouldn't have hit me up to be a part of the Sticks. And so it's kind of like I just want to help some people. I, I, I mean, I, I'm honestly I'm, I'm, I'm very similar to foreplay in that I want to help the little guy. And if I got to keep a show going so that Hitch can get his career going, what he wants to do with media, so that Fatty can keep getting on the screen and because <laughs> he always thinks that he doesn't do a good job or something, but <laughs> so he can be more confident um, and so he can do his thing and have fun. He, lo he loves this. I mean, he said that to us. <laughs> and so um, I, and I love working with Goalie. He's, I mean, this dude is one of the best producers, I think, that our community has. Like he makes mm -hmm. all the graphics, runs the show, everything. Um, so, you're, so you're saying that I can borrow him if I do decide to make my uh, borrow? Yes, I, I, borrow. I, 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 I'm kidding. I, I ego <laughs> ego ego wants to be the the show producer of uh, of what I have in the plans, right? He, we we talked yeah. about it before, and he's like, I'm down. And I think that if I was to pick any co-host ever, it would be ego. And I'm gonna tell you why. It is because of that. It is because of that laugh that you just had. That that not not only my good friends with Ego and Ego is like one of my favorite people in, in the scene. Is one of the one of the reasons that like I I can consider like him a friend is is and this is why I like the scene right because I would have never met this dude. Never ever ever met this dude. Uh, but he's he's like he he has something right. Like he has something to offer and he's knowledgeable. And but the way that he portrays it. And the way that he puts forth his thoughts is what makes him like my number one pick for a co-host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because I think that we will, we would have an entertaining show like nine out of nine times. I like Ego a lot. He's a good guy. I, I mean, we would all watch it. <laughs> I would for sure. But yeah, no. So I'm I'm glad that that, that you that, that you did start doing that. The 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 the, the problem with what we do, right? The problem in, of being in the in the public eye is that we often focus way too much on the negative part. Like you're gonna put more focus on the ten people that are saying you suck than the ninety people that love you, right? You're always gonna. It's just human. It's just it's just the way that human psychology works, right? You're always gonna put the negative forth because you yourself are insecure maybe, right? And, and I'm not talking about insecure like, oh, I'm not outgoing, but everybody yeah. has insecurities and they're heightened when somebody says, you know what, you suck, right? Yeah. So, you know, it, it is what it is and, and I suggest and I ask you to please not stop doing what you do because of somebody else's, I'm, it, it, it'll be like this, you're, you're a father. If somebody told you, hey man, stop working there, you can't feed your kids no more, are you gonna let them? No, right? And if and if and if and if you're getting paid, right? And if and I say this over and over and I'll say it again just in case whoever's watching has never heard me say this, right? People call people call people that make money off of video games money whore. People say you're only doing it because of the money. You're only doing it because yes. of that. No. No, 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 no. When I used to get up at 7 in the morning and take a shower and be out the door by 8 to be at my corporate job, I only went there because I was a money whore. I did that because I wanted that money. <laughs> what I do today, the money that I make today is made because I worked hard and mostly because of the passion that I have for my art, my craft, my job, right? So I was, I was, your, your dad... All right, whether he's a fireman, whether he's a, he's a bank teller, whether he's a bank supervisor, he's the money whore because he's working for somebody else and he's only doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I love what I do and I just happen to get handsomely rewarded because I'm a handsome individual. GG, <laughs> no re. Handsome hex. <laughs> so wait, I, I want to back up. You, you said um, I want to give away something. And I I'm do. sure the chat is wondering what you were talking about. So Yeah, no, I, I, I tweeted out, uh, we just got a couple of posters from MLG. They sent a couple of posters and they sent a whole bunch of keychains. Uh, so after the show, anybody that used hashtag the sticks, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick a couple of you and then you're going to receive uh, a private message from, from uh, the optic house at the optic house. That's how we handle our giveaways. You're gonna receive a, a message. You're gonna send send us back your info, and you're gonna receive something uh, in one to two weeks. Don't rush. Don't rush us. We're giving you free stuff, right? Yeah, oh, man. So that's what it is. Awesome. That's awesome. All right. So uh, I think Hitch, you're up for questions. We got we're in overtime <coughs> we're right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you All guys right. for staying in overtime. Well, we only got what two questions out? Three? Yeah, that's crazy. Um, well, I always say it. I I, I talk a lot. That's why I. I <laughs> I warn no. everybody that invites me to their show. I'm like, bro, what's your time? An hour. Not enough. No. <laughs> Don't yeah, you just me on. You just preached for us, man. That was sick. <laughs> um, so I got a, a really popular question, but I just happened to pick this one out from at Kings Hyper. He said, is, is Optic looking into any other esports, whether FPS or, or other? Always. Always, always, always. But I'm very good at not rushing. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 34 years old. And what I've learned from year 27 to now is that you can rush anything in the world that you want and have mediocre results, if that. Or you can be patient and, and do it right and have, uh, and have the, the, the best possible outcome scenario. Um, so, yeah. Are we are we looking to expand into other esports? Of course, every everybody that's in my position and anybody that owns an organization, that's what they want to do. But you don't just want to rush in there and just buy your way in there just because you can, right? You don't just say, oh, you know what, I want to buy a team in in Counter Strike, right? That community may have heard of Optic, but they have no affiliation to the players. They have no relation like with 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 uh, whoever you pick. There's no no brand association or assimilation so you'll never have the same the same rewards that you're going to have if you organically step into something and grow with it as it grows so uh patience is is, is going to be something that I, that I always focus on and that's something that I'm trying to teach my my younger teammates right patience young grasshopper patience 
Let me let me throw one out there, Fatty. Um, so we've had a there's another owner that's been on our show multiple times. Um, respects you greatly. Has learned a lot from you. Uh, but one of the things he mentioned is he doesn't know how you would how he would root for two different teams. Like <laughs> two having two teams. How would he root for two teams? And so <laughs> instead of asking you how you root for two teams, what I want to yeah. ask you, and you may not be able to answer this question, is which of your two teams do you think is going to be better at Advanced Warfare, Optic Nation, or Optic Game? Oh, and why? If you actually answer it, hmm. if you actually answer, <laughs> no, of course, I, 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 somebody I, asked that. We're, to, uh, we're very over. good. Yeah, no, we're very good at, at being honest, right? Like, uh, anytime that that Embos and his team outplays Nasha and and his team, the second we get back to the house, I'm like, "What's up, A team captain?" In front of Nasha, <laughs> in front of everybody, right? It's it's uh it. It's easy for me to root for whoever's doing better uh, because <laughs> because they're representing like my brand. But at the same time, it's easy for somebody like Ambos to to be okay if Nate beats them or Nate be okay if 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 Ambos beats them because they spend every single day together. They work out together. They play ball together. They eat uh, together. They do everything together. I it's. It's like if my brother was to come in and start his own organization and his organization like overtook mine, I'm not gonna be like hating on him, right? It's my brother. I was like, that's my. I'm gonna be happy for him. Uh, yeah. And 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 you know, if if you hate on success, you know what happens. <laughs> so I hate on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can't you can't be happy if you can't be. The only people that hate are the people that are not happy with themselves and are too lazy to do something about it. Right? Mm -hmm. What we have. What we have shown is a possibility, right? It when when Hutch first said to me when he left Optic in fuck, 2009. Sorry for swearing. There it is. Count it. You did it. Number one. When, oh. Yeah. When, when Hutch says like, "Yo, man, like, like I'm making like some pretty good money on on Machinima. Maybe you should try it." I didn't say, "Damn it, why him? Why him, God? Why did you give him that opportunity?" I saw if he could do it, I can do it, and I did. Awesome. Show me, show me the way, and I'll and I'll I'll make I'll make sure that if I want to, I'll walk down I'll walk down that same path. It's just is it true hips. actually? Is it true that you're one of the first to start, or you kind of breeded the idea? I don't know if this is a rumor that I heard about the whole partnering of channels because I know yes. that it used to be. So how did tell? Give me a little snippet of how that went down, or what role you had in. When Machinima made the decision that instead of oh can you not tell me you're making this oh work? no I'm not I'm not I'm not with Machinima anymore so of course I, I any any time any chance that I get to organically sound like a boss okay <laughs> I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna sound like a boss all right uh, so so it was it was pretty pretty standard right so TGN a network that was owned by someone who was that? I think Maker Studios TGN approached us and said hey I know you have a partnership with Machinima because at, at one point or another you couldn't have a partnership, right? Because of the yeah. licenses from the games, no way to monetize, et cetera, et cetera. And the only way that we were able to make money is by submitting videos to Machinima. And then we used to get a cut of that money and they used to get like that. I was making videos for Machinima when Machinima only paid for North American views, all right? So if a top five kill camps of the week got a million views, I was only gonna get paid like 500,000 because it was split between 500,000 views in North America uh, and the rest of the world, right? So I was getting paid half of what I was really supposed to get paid. Uh, but then, you know, the, the world changed and whatever happened. So TGN comes in and he's like, hey, you know, we, we have this new thing that we're doing. We can partner channels and you can upload as many as you want. And then you can, you know, it, it could be a lot more stable for you to make, you know, for you to justify leaving your day-to-day -day -day job and, and, and be okay with uh, putting your responsibilities on hold to get paid. So... What happened was that we said, okay, cool, let's do that. And then they said, hey, do you know anybody else that would be interested? I'm like, yes. So I hit up, should I say that? Yeah, so I hit up Woody. I hit up uh, uh, Only Use Big Blade. I hit up like a whole bunch of other people. And I was like, yo, dudes, why don't you guys come do this? I, like, I don't want, I'm just throwing you out, throwing it out to this, uh, the opportunity exists, blah, 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 right? So bam, Machinima gets mad. It's like, Hector, we know that it was you that's recruiting these people for them. And I said, time out. I'm not recruiting for anybody. These are my friends in the community. There's an opportunity here. I, I, I don't have any use for it. I'm already using it. So why won't I tell them that they can, you know, be be okay with leaving, leaving their day-to-day -day jobs to focus on what they love? Why wouldn't I do that? So they're like, well, we want you to come back. I'm like, man, I already told this dude that we were going to, you know, stay with them. 
And they're like, well, come back. I'm like, are you going to give me a partnership on one channel? They said, no, we can't. I was like, all right, then are you going to let me upload as many videos as I want to your channel? And they said, no, well, we obviously can't do that. And I said, all right, well, we can't do it. So hung up the phone. They went on their way. Two days later, they're like, all right, so we can't do it. I'm like, sorry, man, they offered Optic J a job. We, we're going to, we're, we're a family. We're going to stick together. They're like, well, what if we offer Optic J a job? I'm like, all right, let's do it. But you also have to partner anybody with a with with a with x amount of subs to do whatever and they said well we'll talk about it i'm like no tgn is going to overtake because at one point you can see like the top 30 channels in gaming the top 30 channels in comedy and i'm like tgn is going to have all that if you guys don't build a network like you got to build a network you have to put it put us in your sub box you have to do this and then the other and they're like all right so we think about it they did it they ended up doing it they ended up getting one of the best like workers in the industry which is optic j and Optic J started out as, as, a, as like a like a community manager and then became like the head of affiliate program because of his like hard work. So they ended up getting the, the better end of that stick, right? So, um, so yeah, I told them that I wouldn't come back and I wouldn't uh, tell the other guys to come back to Machine Cinema unless we all got partnerships. And you can verify that. You can hit anybody up and ask about that. Any people that oh, I met today, cross I heard about it. I heard about it. And Optic J is still with Machine Cinema, right? No. Oh, when did he leave Machine Cinema? Uh, like last year, he's he works for Google now. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. that's a step up. In case you guys didn't know, and he's still obviously an, uh, a very very close advisor of Optics. So. And he's somebody uh, said in the chat that the sticks is trending. No way. I haven't checked Twitter though, so I don't. Know. Uh, let me change my things to select location United States. Yeah, I think the the next question I was going to ask was going to fit into that really well. And that is, uh, will the old men of Optic ever compete in a LAN tournament? And that's from Warring God. Which I I thought, by the way, and I thought this was way cool. In Anaheim, when you guys had the table set up and you guys were screaming at anybody that would come play, I I just thought that was really cool. Thank you, yeah. Uh, So would we ever do it? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) We oh, are, I can't wait to see this. We are, we are absolutely <laughs> the best shit talkers in the world. Okay? The stuff, and we take it easy on stream. Like, if you were to see the old of optic thread on, on, on text, you would think that we're not friends. Fwiz, <laughs> Fwiz is like, we, we're like, so we sharpen each other. Like, we're just cutting each other down, but at the same time, doing that. And, and, and the fact that we're older and, and, and we know the deal that, you know, it's all for show and it's all like that. And it's fun. We have fun. It's a, it's like four drunk dudes that are never drunk just talking smack, <laughs> right? So when when Johnny Sniper or fucking Tommy Nobody starts talking crap to us, we're like, you beat us, you're T-Bag. I'm like, bro, I'm the owner of Optic. This guy's like the head of, you know, it's the VP of MLG. I think like, we're like, it's not a big, we're having fun. Like, have fun. You know, it's a... It's it's good. So would we ever compete? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When are you gonna call out uh, Envy to make an old men of Envy team and y'all can play like a like a show match or something like that on stream? That's what I want to see. Cast it by Shining even... Patty. So so check it out. All right. So that will never happen. Uh, uh, <laughs> one, I don't think I don't think I don't think uh, Hasbro would ever would ever like create an old men of Envy just because he'd be like, oh, we're copying them and he's very good at at doing his own thing. Two. Right, Hastro, Foreplay, Stainville, and whoever they all they they all they and Ramble, they all play pro. What's the point? Yeah. You know, yeah. Just, yeah. there's no point there. They 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 win. Open up, open up NB one. Okay, let's just pretend like it already happened, uh, and, and they won. All right, so yeah. good job. <laughs> we'll leave we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I got a I got a Giazzo, United States trend. The stick is on there. That's cool. That's so sick. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Yeah, congrats, dudes. You guys yeah, you no. guys deserve it. Good thing that you guys are using a hashtag. I don't want to look at all these notifications I have on my Twitter. Hex is the one that told us to use the hashtag, by the way. He's smart. Oh, uh, stop it. <laughs> okay. Oh, fine. Okay, fine. Keep going. I like hearing it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, did you guys have any more of those questions that you wanted to throw at him? Um, I got one more. Okay, and then I'll do our regular close. Okay. Um, so this guy named I'm Set Free said, uh, who is the most skilled sniper to be ever be on Optic? And with that being said, 
um, alongside of that, who is the best skilled pro player to ever be? I can answer the sniper one. Go ahead. Let me see what happens. Uh, oh, I want to see you ask for the sniper one. I'm going to say Pred. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. That's my opinion. Yeah, well, you're wrong. <laughs> what would you say? Uh, D-Treats, absolutely. D-treats. Oh, I forgot about D-Treats. Dang it. Yeah, D-Treats. Uh, is, 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 yeah, and and only because he did it against Reg Guts. One of the first things, when we first started making montages, when we first started the first sniper team ever, my rule, or well, my brother's rule, was like, you don't lose, and you cannot appear on any montage, or you're out, and above all, you cannot make gameplays where there's more than three snipers, I believe, because at that point it just becomes easy. So everything that the d was doing was against regular guns. Uh, and then Predator, we let Predator in and, and he, because the amount of content that he was putting in, right? He was putting like a montage a day. And he was like on, on montage number 23 in Modern Warfare 2. And we're like, yeah, you, we don't care that it's in sniper lobbies and that you're using steady aim, rookie. Come on over. <laughs> Welcome to the team, pal. So yeah, and then Predator ended up being like a, a, a good dude too. So I was like, I, I've had, I've had the pleasure of always being lucky, of having good teammates that have that have been good people, or maybe it's that I shaped them to be that way because I don't take no bullshit. <laughs> Who's the best sniper right now? Uh, I think Pomage for sure. Yeah, sorry. If, I, because I've seen him, I've seen him play in non-sniper lobbies. Why he chooses to play in sniper lobbies, pff, beyond me. And why they choose to go back in time to other CODs, beyond me as well. That's another reason that I didn't like the the, the way that the sniper team was going. They're like multi COD, like no, don't fucking go backwards. It's like <laughs> it's like me going back and, and uploading daily <laughs> content of Call of Duty Two. Like the people that you're playing against are bad, right? So you're not fooling anyone. Yeah. The people that are playing there's like they're casual people that don't even know that Call of Duty ghosts is out. So they're playing whatever came with the game or whatever came with it. They've heard Call of Duty somewhere and all they saw was Call of Duty 4 and it was cheap. I'm gonna get Call of Duty 4 and play it. Bam, you gotta feed on them easy. What was your favorite game to snipe in? Uh but if if I was to say, now the question uh to snipe in? Uh yeah. Call of Duty 4. Yeah, yeah. Um Oh, Black Ops 2, because of the iron sight. But the best sniper in the game right now, I would have to say, is Karma. The best montage sniper is Pamash. But the best overall sniper in Call of Duty, period, I would have to say is Karma. Karma has always well, been the best sniper. Since you brought up Karma. Um, <laughs> before we go to the closing <laughs> segments, um, was there ever a chance? There's a guy that asked, he just said Optic Karma question mark. Um, was there ever or is there ever a chance that Karma will play on up? In the near future, I'll say that. Ooh, of- uh, in the near future? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't like making roster changes. Uh, having a player like Karma, though, it's not something that you don't pay attention to, right? It's, just, yeah. it's the same thing that when Clayster was up for grabs, we're like, we, Nature's like, no, 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 we're not talking about it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like bro, when a player like Clayster is up in the air, we're going to take the time. We're going to take at least half an hour to talk about it, <laughs> yeah. all right? And, and, and then at the time, we decided not to, not, to go with, not to go with Clay. Clay ended up coming, you know, being on Optic anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd certainly consider it, and I, I, I've always been a big fan of uh, Karma sniping, and, I'm, you know, so since, since Black Ops 2, go back and look, look at my Black Ops 2 tweets. I always said Karma's the best sniper. Um, I will say that there's a point zero 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 one percent chance <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you're saying there's a chance. So we're going to close the sticks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Hex, for helping us trend and break our record as far as viewers went. Um, And just coming on the show, we appreciate your honesty and uh, uh, your humor as well and uh, your ability, your willingness to answer all of our questions. Uh, So what we do... I'm just a whole package. The the total package? The total. The total, complete, and utter package. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, go ahead. What's the closing stuff? Sorry. All right, so, I don't want to get off. I don't, I don't have anything to do. No, no, no. You're fine. We're in <laughs> over time anyway. We got time. So it, the way we close the show is we opened it by each of you guys saying your affiliation is your name. Um, we close it by you kind of repeating who you are, blah, blah. You can say whatever you want to whoever you want. That's that's it. You can, I don't care what you say. Um, so we're going to start with Pitch because we started with Fatty in the open. Um, we're going to go to Fatty, Hex, and then myself. 
All right. Um, so thank you for having me, as always, Kingdom. It's a lot of fun. And uh, thanks, Hex, for stopping by. It was super awesome. It's the first time I've ever probably trended in anything that I've ever been a part of. So that's super, uh, it's going to be um, memorable, I guess. Um, one thing that I did want to talk about is I did release a video today where I, it is a montage of me sniping in competitive play um, in like GB and, and UMG matches. And I, the music, I actually edited it, and the music is by me as well. Like I, I rap over it. That's Ooh. funny. As funny as that may seem, like I, I actually put a lot of time into it, so I'll put that in the chat as soon as we get off. So if you guys can please stop by, it would really mean a lot. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for having me, and we'll see you next time. I am your short, fat friend, Smiting Fatty. Thanks again for stopping by and and you know watching us, because I have a lot of fun doing this. I think I said on uh, like Tuesday last week, I'm looking forward to Monday, and I didn't even know Hector was going to be on. So. Uh, you know, I'm excited. Thanks for, you know, helping us out. Kingdom, always thank you for, for helping Hitch and I out and Goalie. Um, and Hector, if you ever need a short, fat guy in an old optic jersey to come cast for you. We don't. Um, ego can do it. Ego can do it. Go ahead, Hex. <laughs> uh Peace. No, I'm kidding. Uh, thank you for having me on. I was, it was a pleasure to come on here. I, I, I love coming on to to these, especially you know in, in your beginning stages, and it's something that you want to take off the ground. I want. I always want to. I always make it a point to to stop in and 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 make it. I've always done it. Have been doing it since Call of Duty Four. Um, and uh, you know, it's I, I'm doing I'm doing what somebody didn't do for me once, and I remember you. That's why you'll never be what you think you're gonna be. Huh. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, no, it's 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 all about paying it forward, guys, and and uh, and I do appreciate you coming on here. Hopefully, one day you you are as successful as I've been lucky enough to be, and you can help somebody else out. So uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, anytime you guys can't find a replacement, please try to find somebody else before you contact me. Voices about the All right, guys, this is uh, Kingdom Soldier. Thank you, Hitch, Fatty, Hex. Um, as always, thank you, Goalie, uh, my producer. Make sure you guys hit him up, thank him on Twitter. Everything that you see, all the promos, the little screenshots, the thumbnails for everything involved with the sticks, he makes, he does, um, helped us to get on the front page, all that kind of stuff. And so I really appreciate Goalie. Thank you guys that subbed um, and anybody that followed. I'm sure we got an increase in followers. We do every show. I uh, appreciate you guys being here. What I want to say is there is no person that has achieved anything great ever in history that didn't do it with a little bit of adversity. They, there, there's nobody that could tell a story of how they march to greatness without some level of adversity and hard work. And so when, you, when you're hitting the wall on something you want to do, whether it's YouTube, um, you want to grow your channel, you want to grow your brand, whether it's even at school, at work, in relationships, whatever it is, when you're facing adversity, just know that you're on your way to being successful. You're on your way to greatness. It'll just be a part of your story. Then. Um, so thank you guys for being a part of my story and all the adversity that I've dealt with since I've been on YouTube for two and a half years. Um, the sky's the limit. I appreciate people like Hex for helping me get here, um, and, and Fatty, and Hitch, um, and everybody else, Crush, all you guys that have been on the show. This is your boy, Kingdom Soldier, and we will see you next week on the sticks. Same time, same place. Peace. Shout out to Crush. <laughs>